hi guys welcome back to my channel in today's video I will be showing you how I sculpt a hard gel extension uh, the other day I noticed that there was a break right at the very corner of my middle finger which I'm trying to show you here um, it kept getting caught in my hair so I decided I probably should fix it or it will annoy the crap out of me Now I apologize, I did not get to film the removal process of my previous extension. So you'll see here that it's already off and that my nail is already prepped. Um, here I am showing the primers that I use, which is Light Elegance Tack and Vita Prime. And with Vita Prime, uh, just a little bit goes a long way. Um, so just a small dab at the base of the nail is more than enough. I do put a little bit more since I always have problems with lifting. I have very oily nail plates and I notice that things pop off regularly if I don't put enough Vitaprime on there or if I didn't prep my nails right. And after that has dried, I take tact and make sure to scrub that in really well on the nail plate for maximum adhesion. Then I cure that in the lamp for 30 seconds. After that's been cured, it's time for the nail form. Normally, I'd have the form on on every nail, but since I'm doing a fix, I didn't have it right on right away. The form that I use is from E-Nail Couture. This is definitely my favorite. I've tried several forms, and I hated the fact that they were so flimsy. This form from E-Nail Couture is made out of a thicker material. Holds up really well. I rarely have to cut them to fit, and usually I get them on sale. So here I am uh, fitting the nail form and making sure that there is no gaps right at the very end of my uh, free edge there, and then securing the sides and checking again. And then um, closing the bottom of the nail form. So what I use to sculpt my nail extensions are hard gels from Light Elegance. I use natural fiber to create the extension itself. And for the body and structure of the nail, I use their one-step gel in the shade Natural Pink. The gel brush that I use is from Presto. It is the number four square brush, which is the perfect size for my nails. So 
So starting with natural fiber, I begin making my extensions by spreading a thin amount of gel on my whole nail. This helps my extension have something to grip onto, so it's not just hanging on by the free edge. It also helps me with removal later on, since it serves as a guide for me. But that's what I'm doing here, so just spreading that thin amount of gel on the entire nail plate. Then without curing that layer, I grab a good amount of gel for the length that I think I would need and I place that right in the middle of my nail. And then move it from side to side until it meets with the corners of my free edge. And then once I'm happy with how it looks, I put it in a lamp to cure for 30 seconds. So immediately after curing, it is time to pinch. Um, I am using the gel pinching tool from Light Elegance again. And I make sure to put even pressure on each side. I take my time with this. I really, I've learned the lesson of making sure that I have a good C-curve with my extensions. They really do make a difference. And that's what I'm doing here. So that's why you see me pinching several times because I wanted to make sure that I have a really good extension C-curve. Now that the C curve is good, it's time to remove the form. I use a pair of really pointy tweezers. I don't even remember where I got this from, but they have a very fine point and I kind of um, get that in between the form and the extension to kind of finagle it from each other. That way it's easy to remove. I don't risk breaking the extension by forcing it off of the form. And there's our seeker right there.
Now on to building the structure and adding strength through the nail. Again, I use Light Elegance's um, One Step Gel for this. It is the perfect viscosity for me. I learned early on that I am not a very patient person when it comes to waiting for my gel to self-level. And One Step is very quick in doing that. You gotta be careful though because it can get away from you really fast if you're not paying attention. But this is definitely my preferred viscosity. The technique that I use is when you put a slip layer down and then grab a good dollop of gel, spread it all over the nail, and then you turn your nail upside down and let gravity do the work for you in terms of creating your apex. This technique pairs really well with the viscosity of One Step because you can almost watch the gel self-level to the form that you want it to be. So here I am with the dollop of gel and then pillowing it back to the cuticle making sure that I get close without touching and then guiding the rest of the gel down to the entirety of my nail. Then immediately after doing that, I turn my nail over and let gravity do its work. And then once I'm happy with the shape of my apex, I put it in the lamp for three seconds, take it out, um, leave it out for 10 seconds with my hand still turned upside down. And then after the 10 seconds is done, I put it back in for another three seconds in the lamp, which you'll see here, I put it in there a little too long and felt the heat. And Turn it upside down again and wait for it to cool down completely and then I cure it for the whole 30 seconds for the full cure. I actually learned that trick from Selena Ryden. Um, this technique that I use is very prone to heat spikes because of the amount of gel that you're putting on to sculpt the nail. And I found a video of hers kind of detailing how she prevents heat spikes. And ever since I've been doing that technique, I have saved myself from a lot of heat spikes for sure. So this is what it looks like after the first layer is done. Off camera, I did add another layer to this. I probably shouldn't have, but I thought it was a little too thin for my liking, so I added another layer.
So after curing, here I am cleaning off the tacky layer of the gel uh, before I start filing. Now on to the filing. I don't have a specific technique that I follow. I've watched a couple, no, several videos of filing techniques from different people and I've kind of grabbed a little from here and there. But I always start with uh, filing down the free edge to the length that I want and then I go to the sides to file that so that it meets the corners are perfect and then from there it's it's really a free-for-all I file where I think it needs it and go from there the file that I use is from IBD it is from their jewel collection this is the sapphire, which is 150 grit on both sides. And that's what I use to mostly shape the nail. And I intentionally didn't fast forward this so that you can see in real time how long it takes to file down one nail. Although in this situation, I made it a little too thick. So it took me a little bit longer. But again, real-time filing so that you get an idea.
now that all that filing is done, I go ahead and buff the nail using IBD's Diamond Buffer to smooth the nail out even more. And we are done! Did you make it to the end? Holy cow, that was a long video. Um, so here's what it looks like. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching if you made it through to the end. And I will see you on the next one. Bye guys!